Hello everyone, it is your boy Winster and I am back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about the new strategy Fiendsmith. It is a new archetype meant to come out in Infinite Forbidden, the new Yu-Gi-Oh! main set. It is set to come out sometime in July. I know it's going to be at the end. I don't know the exact date, but at the recording of this video, it's the end of June. Um, so later on this coming month, we're going to be talking about how the engine works, the applications, breakdowns of my overall thoughts, pros and cons. But before we get into today's discussion video, do yourselves a favor, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. We're almost we are so close to hitting 3,000 subscribers. I would really, really appreciate it. Also, be sure to check out the description box. I have a very active Discord if you guys want to be part of a great Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Be sure to check out the TikTok, Twitter, and Twitch. Those links are going to be in the description box as well. Make sure to check me out and give me a follow there, guys. But let's get into today's discussion video. So, let's break these cards down. The first card and the only main deck monster is the Fiend Smith. It is a light attribute. 18 attack, 24 defense, level 6 fiend monster. It's effect in hand. You can discard this card for a cost and then add one fiend smith spell a trap from your deck to your hand. It's other effect. You could target one fiend smith, equip card you control, and one monster on the field. Send them to the graveyard. If this card is in your graveyard, you could shuffle one other light fiend monster in your graveyard into the deck or extra deck. Then special summon this card. You could only use each effect of this card once per turn. Disregard the Fable Lore, it is not a Fiendsmith card, but it should be an honorary Fiendsmith card, to be honest, how well it works with the archetype. Uh, the spell card, the Fiendsmith Tractus. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It is a regular spell card. Its effect, add one light fiend monster from your deck to your hand, and then discard one card. You could banish this card from your graveyard. Fusion summon one Fiendsmith fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material. You can only use each effect of this card once per turn. That's it. That's it for the main deck, guys. Let's talk about the extra deck. There are four monsters. We got the Fiendsmith Requiem, a Link level one light fiend monster. The material to some of this card is one light fiend monster, and that's where Lari would come into play. Uh, it's effect. You can only special summon one Fiendsmith once per turn. During the main phase, quick effect, you can tribute this card as cause. Special summon one Fiendsmith monster from your hand or deck. It's other effect. You can target one non-Link light Fiend monster you control. Equip this card from your field or graveyard to that monster you control as an equipped spell that gives it 600 attack. You could only use each effect of this card once per turn. Up next is Fiendsmith, and I apologize if I'm butchering this. It's a Quinita. It is a Light Fiend Link 2 monster. Its materials needed for its summon are two monsters, including a Light Fiend monster. Its effects. During your main phase, you could fusion summon one Fiend Fusion monster from your extra deck by shuffling its materials from your graveyard into the deck. Its other effect. You could target one non-Link Fiend monster you control. Equip this card from your field or graveyard to that monster you control as an equip spell with this effect. Your opponent cannot target the equipped monster with card effects. You can only use each effect of this card once per turn. Fiend Smith Lacrimosa. Again, I apologize if I'm butchering these names. But it is a light fiend, level 6, 24 attack, 24 defense fiend monster. Its effect, its materials for its summon are two light fiend monsters. Its effect, monsters your opponent controls lose 600 attack. You could use each of the following effects of this card once per turn. If this card is fusion summon, you could target one light fiend fusion monster in your graveyard or banishment. Either add it to your hand or special summon it. If this card is into the graveyard, you can shuffle one other light monster from your graveyard into the deck. Our extra deck inflict 1200 damage to your opponent, which is by far the craziest effect that any card could have, in my opinion. But on to the next. Lastly, we got Fiend Smith Dice Irare. Again, I apologize if I'm butchering these names, but this is a level 9, 28 attack, 24 defense light fiend monster. Uh, materials are one the fiend smith and two light fiend monsters quick effect you can negate the effects of a number of face-up cards on the field until the end of this turn up to the total link rating of the link monsters equipped to this card if this card is sent to the graveyard you can shuffle one other light fiend monster from your graveyard into the deck or extra deck and target one card in the field send it to the graveyard you could only use each effect of this card once per turn as for the ratios 
It is pretty straightforward. It is a super small engine. Three, the Fiendsmith. One, the Fabled Lari. Three of the Fiendsmith Tractus. And then one of each extra deck monster. So now that we know what the cards do, now it's important to know what the archetype is actually trying to accomplish. The main focal point of this engine, the main reason you're going to be playing this in your deck is because it gives consistency to any archetype and it does it so where you don't have to use any resource other than one the fiendsmith the one copy of fiendsmith can allow you to go into full snake eyes combo just by having this card all without committing bonfire the normal summon original sinful spoils adia bells or any other card that could start your plays that are already in your hand that in and of itself is amazing. So for the same reasons I just mentioned, consistency. This deck also could potentially branch two engines together that would usually not go together at all. For example, you could go ahead and play Snake Eye, do your full Snake Eyes combo, end on your usual typical board that Snake Eyes can end. And then at the end of the combo, because that deck doesn't have any kind of restrictions other than maybe getting Firelock with Princess, but you usually don't end on Princess to begin with, you could go ahead and start playing with the Fiendsmith engine because this deck could very easily and quickly build into rank six plays on Beatrice, a card from the deck to the graveyard, I don't know, maybe tier limits and start doing a full tier limit combo. Realistically, the sky's the limit with this engine and that's why I think it's so good and so hyped. Let's say that you don't really care about consistency. Let's say that you do not want to play anything else other than Fiendsmith engine. You could actually do that because this could end on a very crazy board as well. It could end with this boss monster, Fiendsmith dies ERA. And this could end with this monster, Fiendsmith Sequita linked to it. And this card could negate face of cards on the field, not just monsters, up to the number of link rating that this card is equipped with, which is going to end up too. I already mentioned it earlier, this engine could spam rank 6 plays, so it goes very easily into Beatrice, and that's why a lot of people are expecting Beatrice to get hit on the next ban list, because it's too good of a card, and it could potentially to bring two strong decks together. But on the opposite end, you could even go into negation outside of this archetype. You could go into rank 6 plays with Lars. You could also go into rank 6 plays with High Wave Caesar, the one that negates special summons, which is absolutely crazy. If everything that I just explained is not enough to convince you, let me tell you, this deck has one more thing to offer. It has the ability to burn for time. Yes, you heard me right, guys. It could burn and win you the game. Not only only can it add consistency to any deck not only is it a small engine not only are the resources needed for this very low it could also win you the game in terms of time there are some downsides to wanting to get your hands on this engine when infinite forbidden does come out at the recording of this video we are only aware of one monster it is the main deck monster he is a secret rare and we don't know if the important spell card or the extra deck monsters are going to come in lower rarity, common, ultra, who knows. Knowing Konami, they're going to be knowing how much we want these cards and they're probably going to make them all secrets. Thus, making this engine extremely, extremely expensive. Not only that, we already know what Konami does. They showed their colors on that previous set. They short printed some cards. Who knows if any of these cards are going to be short printed. I wouldn't doubt it. I hope not because I love giving Konami my money. But only time could tell. So those are my thoughts and opinions on the Fiendsmith. I think it's an amazing engine. Adds a lot of consistency. All for very little resources. But on the other side, it's going to probably be expensive. But I want to get your guys' feedback. What do you guys think of the engine? What do you guys think of the archetype? Are you playing it? Are you not? What are you planning to play with it? Or is it just overhyped? Let me know in the comment section, guys. But that's going to be it for today's video. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We're getting close to 3,000 subscribers. I appreciate every single one of you that does watch my videos. But until next time, peace out. My name is Winster.